Did you have a knack for titles, or were there people who contributed great titles? Because Death Race 2000 is one of the all-time champs, no question. Everybody uh, worked on the titles. Uh, Death Race was my idea. It was from uh, an original story called The Racer, and The Racer had been done as a film. So I came up with the title Death Race, and then I said, this is a science fiction picture laid in the future. How do we take the words death race and say that it's a futuristic picture? This was about 1975. And I think it was actually John Davison, who's gone on to be a very prominent producer, uh, who said, let's put 2,000 on it. <laughs> Knowing what he's done subsequently, I wouldn't have thought Paul Bartel would have been the perfect choice to direct this particular picture. Paul has done a variety of intriguing and and provocative films, but they're not action or science fiction oriented. And yet he turned out this very successful movie for you. How did he get attached to this movie? I had liked the work of Paul Martel for some time, and he had directed Second Unit for me on several films, and I knew he was good with humor. And the original story was a serious story, and I felt that the subject matter was totally original. You cannot always say that, or I put another way, you can very seldom say <laughs> you have a completely original idea. The idea was it was a race from New York to New Los Angeles, and the drivers were rated on how fast they could drive and how many pedestrians they could kill. <laughs> and I felt that Paul had the kind of black humor that uh, would fit this, and I brought in a second unit director, who was actually Chuck Griffith, an old friend of mine, and Chuck did most of the action scenes. So the combination of Paul working with the actors and Chuck working with the fast cars really came together very well. In your cast, you had David Carradine, a very good choice for your lead, but your second lead uh, pretty quickly upstaged him because it was Sylvester Stallone. Now, he was just on the brink of his great success. Do you remember how he came to you or how he was cast in the film? Sly had done a picture in New York, and I don't remember the title of it, but it was a low-budget sort of street hood. Oh, that was Lords of Flatbush. Lords of Flatbush, mm -hmm. yes. And he was brilliant in it. I had seen it, and Paul Martell had seen it, and we jointly felt that he would be ideal for machine gun Jack McGurn, the, uh, <laughs> the heavy in the picture, and so we cast him on that basis. Well, your timing was perfect, wasn't it? It was indeed, because he went from that picture to almost immediate stardom. And that couldn't have hurt you either, in the selling the picture even a year or two later to cable TV and, uh, and down the line on home video. Yes. I cannot put uh, his name above David Carradine's because of contractual obligations, but we now put him equal to David, but just <laughs> below. Why not? Right. Now, the people who made Road Warrior, George Miller and those folks down in Australia, have said that this film inspired them and their Mad Max movies. I'd like you to comment on that, but I'd like you to comment about, in general, how you think your innovative, low-budget films may have influenced mainstream movie makers over the years. I had read, I think, in one of the news magazines uh, that Road Warrior and Mad Max uh, came after they saw uh, Death Race. I'm very proud of Death Race, but I have to admit their films uh, had a slight edge on us. But I think one of the things a low or medium budget filmmaker can do is experiment, can take chances such as we did and such a zany idea as Death Race because you're not gambling that much money. If you're making a hundred million dollar picture at a major studio, you must appeal to a mass audience to get your investment back, and you're going to be fairly conservative as to what you do. But if you're making a picture, say, in today's market for a million dollars, or when we did Death Race, which was, I think, about three hundred thousand dollars, we could afford to essentially go crazy, and in that case, and occasionally otherwise, uh, we hit the jackpot. Now, just to put things in context, if you were spending three to four hundred thousand dollars at that time, and this is the mid 1970s, a major studio movie at that same time would have been about four or five million, you figure, or two to three million, something like that. I would think a major studio film would have been about four or five million dollars at that time. The proportion is still there, and, and yes. the, the gulf is wide, and you really got a lot on the screen for your money, didn't you? Yes. Uh, the uh, cars were designed by uh, an award-winning automotive designer uh, 
and I, I told him the idea that each one would have a theme and uh, he came up with great cars and the cars went on tour with the films and at that time we could take a picture like Death Race put say a hundred prints into the Chicago market and we could beat the majors for a week. That's <laughs> one of the things that bothers me today. We can't do that anymore. It's a different business in terms of the distribution of movies, isn't it? Yes. But fortunately, here's, here we are more than 20 years later, and the film has a new life on video. Yes. Well, it deserves that. Thanks very much, Rod. Thank you.